Bonjour tout le monde, I'm Diane, the American behind We in France here on YouTube and also my blog, where we talk about everyday French life and beyond. And something that's affected everyone in France right now is the nationwide lockdown. As you might know, the entire country has been under a second nationwide lockdown since October 30th. And if you're curious how it's going for me, uh, if you're curious about what the France lockdown rules are, that's exactly what we're going to get into along with how I've personally been coping with it. So let's talk. All right, first of all, let's start with the facts. Uh, the French government website has everything you need to know, and um, please default to that as the most up-to-date resource uh, as rules and regulations change as we move forward. So I'll link that down below just so you have, uh, you know, the complete picture beyond what I'm covering in this post. Um, so yeah, check that link out. But Basically, to minimize the spread of the virus, many of you know that the restrictions here in France have been put into place to limit the public's movement and contact between people until December 1st. So I'm filming this here on Sunday, uh, November 22nd. And just so you're aware, restaurants and bars are closed nationwide. Non-essential shops are closed, including gyms, cinemas, salons. Um, parks, though, are open. And then all schools from kindergarten age all the way up to high school have remained open during this France lockdown. And be aware too that masks are required for all children over the age of six. So when we leave our homes for one of the official reasons that I'll get to uh, in a second, we need a special form, a permission slip uh, of sorts, and it could be a paper thing that we print and write on, or it could be digitally prepared on our phone. And each time we go out, it needs to have our name, our address, our reason for being out, and the time of day. And that's just like the first lockdown. And also a mask is required everywhere, even outdoors. All right, so let's kick it off here with what we can do during the current French lockdown. What we can do is go to work, we could go to university classes, we could bring our children to and from school, and working from home is encouraged wherever possible. We could also go out for essential purchases, such as groceries, including the bakery, which is considered essential. Uh, we could attend important medical appointments that cannot be done over video conference. So if you have a doctor, a dentist appointment, you can go, and you can also go to the pharmacy to get your medication. You can also assist an elderly family member, a handicapped person, uh, or leave your home for childcare reasons. You can also go out and get fresh air, go to the park to exercise, walk your pet for a maximum of one hour per day, no more than one kilometer from your home. So that's more or less half a mile. Uh, you could also go to a court appearance or an administrative appointment. And there's also one thing that I need clarification on, participation in a mission of general interest upon request from an administrative authority. I really don't know what that is. Maybe someone down below has um, some clarity on that. But that's the list of the official reasons. Other than that, other than those specific reasons that I just stated, we are expected to stay home. All right, let's get into what we cannot do during the France lockdown. You can't go to a friend or to a family member's home just to visit, just to socialize, even within that one kilometer limit. Um, you also cannot eat in person at a restaurant or have a drink at a bar. You can't shop in person at a store. You can't have a coffee at a cafe um, because they're closed. You can't just hang out at a park, sunbathe, walk around town all afternoon, and you cannot go for a scenic drive. Most of all, you cannot travel between parts of France just for leisure. So you'll see videos are coming from my home. Um, you also can't exercise or go out for a walk during that one hour of daily activity uh, with people who are not a part of your household. So you can't really meet up with friends at the park for a jog. Now, all that said, how's the lockdown going in practice? Well, <laughs> to be honest, out where I live in the maine et loire so not Paris, not a crazy big city, there's been very little enforcement of the rules by police, and it really feels like lockdown light in a way. Um, last lockdown, police were out. I saw sporadic police checks when I was out with my dog. This time around, I haven't seen a single one. So as you'd expect, lots of people are out and about, out on the street driving, maybe for a legit reason, maybe not. Maybe they're being respectful of that one hour limit. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, if I didn't know we were under lockdown, I'd honestly have no idea that France was locked down looking at the amount of people um, and the cars out on the road just in my area. I can't speak to other areas of France, but 
I just feel like with any, without any enforcement of the rules, you know, they're there for people to abuse. You know, I've seen people out and about in public without any mask. And I just feel like there would be more adherence if people saw there were consequences for ignoring the rules, because it's not fair to those of us who, regardless of our personal feelings, are following the rules. And if you do break the rules, speaking of consequences, the fine's 135 euros for non-compliance and the fine's even higher for repeat offenders if you're caught. But like I said, I haven't seen or heard of anyone locally being fined. So tell me, are the rules being enforced where you live? I don't know. Um, President Macron said uh, in his speech to the nation a couple of weeks ago when the, the second lockdown kicked off that the government would reassess the France lockdown measures mid-month. So last week, uh, Prime Minister Jean Castex, he addressed the nation and um, he confirmed that restrictions would be staying in place until uh, December 1st, as is, maybe longer. So as you might have seen, uh, according to the WHO, new coronavirus cases in France are continuing to rise um, and they've topped out at about 48,000 people at the time of this recording, um, you know, since this has all started. So yes, it's clear why these measures are, are staying in place, as inconvenient as they could be. Um, so a few of you asked how things are going for me personally, thank you, um, and we're okay. Uh, Tom, he can't work from home 90% uh, of the time, so he is going into work uh, pretty much daily, but he has his own office, not all of his coworkers are there, he can shut his door, so it's relatively safe. Um, some of his coworkers' kids were under quarantine because they're, uh, you know, they have the virus, so their parents are, are quarantining just to be safe. And, um, you know, we've been coping by ordering a lot of takeout uh, from local restaurants to kind of help them um, help them hang on a bit financially. So I've been using <laughs> delivery apps and and all of that. Um, and many of them have adapted by offering special weekly mem uh, menus, including uh, an excellent gastronomic restaurant uh, near where I live, where you can order via Facebook or email or over on Instagram. And then you pick up your food in the evening. So it's kind of like a, they call it click and collect. Uh, or just special menus that are being made to cope with the lockdown. And I just feel like for me personally, I'm fortunate. My daily routine is more or less the same because I generally work from home and uh, my dog Daphne, she loves her walks to the park, totally unaware of anything um, that's changed. So yay for being a dog. But um, I'll say um, with everything going on, I definitely felt some physical anxiety nearly daily for at least part of the day. And it, it's better now, um, not panic attacks or anything like that, but this annoying physical symptom that was definitely worse a couple of weeks ago during the, um, the American presidential election week. And it just, just felt like stress piled on stress, piled on stress and distractions help. So I'm trying to stick to my routine. But you know, it's not just the pandemic. Maybe you can relate. It's kind of like the pandemic kind of starts you out on a foundation of shaky stress and then everything else going on in your life, whatever that is, kind of builds on that already cracked foundation. So it just multiplies, you know? And for me personally, the anxiety, it feels like I can't quite breathe in deeply enough. Like I need to stretch my lungs, you know? And then there's just like pressure and discomfort in the center of my chest, which is kind of like an annoying friend that you just can't get a break from, you know? So. Like I laugh about it because what else are you going to do? And I've, you know, I've never been an anxious person. Mentally, I feel fine. Um, but you know, the body does its own thing. So that's just one little thing I've been dealing with. Uh, to help, I cling to my workout routine even more than ever just to kind of maintain that, that sense of normalcy, um, get that endorphin rush. And luckily, I enjoy working out. I love doing it at home. I'm motivated to do it. And I'm a huge Peloton fan. So whoo. Love that. Um, and also cozy, I'm always kind of cozy, but I love you know, taking comfort in my twinkly lights, my blankets, my socks, the dim lighting. And um, self-care has really been a, a priority for a while now in this really strange year. And um, I don't know, I feel like we've all lost a ton of time and I know it's fall, but at the same time, it's shocking that it's fall and nearly winter. And something I wanna say specifically for those of us who do live abroad or far from family and we're under lockdown, the holidays can be really difficult in general, and especially if we're used to seeing our family and friends and now we're not. And this year, it's just a, it's a sad reality for so many of us that we won't have a normal holiday. And yeah, things could be worse. They always could be worse. And I'm so grateful, you know, that I have a loving spouse, family, friends, FaceTime is just a tap away. I have food to eat, a roof over my head. Um, you know, so yeah, it could be worse, but it's still hard to grapple with the fact that the holiday period will be even more difficult than usual this year. And 
you know, normally we go to the U.S. for Thanksgiving. Uh, we'd be there now, but we won't be able to do that this year. And we plan on having a nice lockdown Thanksgiving meal with my in-laws, but they live 45 minutes away. So after these new rules were put into effect, that kind of disappeared. So it'll just be me, Tom, and Dagny, my dog. Um, and I got my, my turkey, my cranberries at Lidl yesterday. So, you know, there's always a touch of little comforts, you know, that kind of pop up when you need them the most. So I am thankful for that. But again, I, I just want to say like, yes, things could be worse. I don't live in a war zone. But at the same time, I want you to know whatever you're feeling is valid and okay. You know, we don't, we don't need to push our feelings and our emotions aside just because other people have it worse. That's not a fun game to play because someone else is always going to win at that game. You know, it's completely normal to feel sad and frustrated um, just with the state of the world right now. And it's okay to be emotional. So your feelings are yours. Your feelings are valid and whatever they are, just be kind to yourself. And I have to work on that too, but I'm telling you, so I also hear it myself and you know, finally, just regarding the state of the lockdown, I think we all need to do our part to abide by the rules wherever you live so this virus gets under control. You know, I've been respecting what the government has asked of us, even if I do find it annoying and inconvenient at times, and it's just so long. But the truth is, the sooner we can get back to normal, the better off we'll all collectively be wherever we live. And maybe I saved the most important part for the end. I just want to say, regardless of your political stance or views on the virus or masks or lockdowns, I think we can all agree on the simple fact that we don't want to be sick ourselves. We don't want to see our loved ones suffering from illness, from financial issues, stress, or anything else that this pandemic has caused. No one wants to feel fearful or angry. And we want the global economy to flourish. We're all on the same team here. So. I truly hope we could get there sooner rather than later. And um, that's really all I wanted to, to say today, just a little personal check-in. So just to, just to wrap up, if you're in France, I would love to hear how you're coping with the lockdown. If you see rules being enforced, if you're doing okay, talk to me in the comments. We're, we're all in the same boat. Um, and then if you're in the UK, um, I know other parts of the world are in lockdown too. So just, hey from France, just a little, little boost for you. Um, just wanted to say, hey. And um, if you want to read about some of the pandemic silver lining for a positive change, I'll link that down below. It's a blog post I did with um, a collaborative post with some of my readers. Um, and then just the last thing, I do have a physical mailing address now. Some of you asked me for that. So it's down in the description uh, if you want to send me something the old school way. <laughs> that would be really nice. And I also have a link for my We in France newsletter down below as well. It's free. It's easy. One click, no spam. And I'd love to see you there. So. Just uh, again, thank you so much for watching, being part of this community, and um, I'll see you right back here on We in France soon. Salut!